Hey guys, it's uh, me again, Mark Coots with Teva Corporation. Uh, just thought I'd talk to you today about a little bit of soil balancing and things like that because we're growing these crops in our soil and we're big believers in um, looking at your soil tests to know what you do and do not have out there so we know we're putting the proper nutrients out there. But what we'd like to do is teach you guys how to read your own soil tests so that you know what you need without somebody like myself or anybody else running up down the road trying to sell you something. Uh, if you know how to read your own soil test, then you know you will know then if they're telling you the truth or not. So uh, what we use here at Teva Corporation is the Albright system. And if you talk to many people that are doing sustainable agriculture or any of that this kind of day, uh, most of them are using Dr. Albright's system. Uh, everybody may tweak it their own way a little bit here or there, but the base is Dr. Albright's system. So um, I just want to get into you what we talk about, what we look at, and so that you guys will know on your own. So on your soil test, the first thing that we look at is your base saturation. So in your base saturation, you have five positive cations. So in that base saturation, these five positive cations are potash, magnesium, calcium, hydrogen, and sodium, okay? In that, this is your acid in the soil, and this is, your, is a salt in the soil, okay? So in this, we want these all to be certain balances so that you'll get better efficiency out of your soil. So when all these numbers add up, we want them to equal 100, you know, 100, 100%. 100 so of that 100%, we want potash to be anywhere from 3 to 5%. We want the magnesium to be 12, 10 to 12%. Your calcium, we want it to be anywhere from 65 to 70. Hydrogen, 6 to 9. And then your sodium, 1% uh, or less. So um, these are the balances. If you get your soil in these type of levels, then you're gonna get more efficiency out of anybody's fertilizer that you use, whether it's mine that we sell, that the kind that we sell here at Teva Corporation, or your dry or anything else, because your, your soil is more efficient at these kinds of levels. The next thing that I wanna look at on a soil test is I look at the CEC. So this kind of tells me what your dirt is made up of. So lower CECs, if you're looking at maybe six and below, you're looking at sandy, you know, six to twelve, you're in your loam. You know, in your loams, and then maybe thirteen plus, you're getting more into clay. So these are just general kind of things, you know. But the higher the number you go, the less sandy it gets, and the more clay it gets. The higher the number, you know, because it's clay, you're going to be able to hold nutrients better than you will at sand, you know. So this is the next thing that I look at. So when I look at a soil test, first thing I look at is your base saturation. Then I look at your CEC, then we look at your, P, your pH, okay? And your pH is made up because of these positive cations over here. So it's actually uh, checking your hydrogen, you know, uh, you know, off of the base, off of these uh, positive cations that you've got over here. So, and then the last thing, that I, the last couple of things I took, take a look at then, I look at your P1 and your P2. This is your uh, weak bray and you're strong. So basically that means that this P1 is what the plant can use right now. P2 is what's in reserve for the plant to use later. And then after that, then we look at all your micronutrients. Okay. So that's kind of the order that I look at when I'm looking at a soil test, the things that I want to look for. That's the order I look for. Uh, I want to look at these base saturations first, see what kind of dirt I'm working with and what I've got to deal with. And then I look at your phosphate levels and then at your micro so we know what, whether we need to add boron or zinc or manganese, whatever it may need to be. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is uh, on these levels, if you're on, the, if you're on sandier soil, then I prefer to have your potash levels stay a little bit higher. So if we can keep them up in the four to five range, you're going to get better yields from that. The, lower, the higher you go on your CEC, then if you're down in the two and a half to three and a half range, you're going to be okay on your potash levels most of the time. So that's something to think about, just the kind of dirt that you're dealing with and what kind of efficiencies that you're wanting. 
So uh, let's talk about, just real quick, about liming, okay? Most everybody's going to lime off the pH of your soil, okay? And what we do, we don't, I don't base my liming recommendations off of this pH. I make my liming recommendations off of this base saturation right here. If it's a low, if we've got a, a base saturation down here of 50, normally that means your hydrogen is going to be 15 to 20, and that's going to mean that your pH then is going to go down, you know, in 6.0, 6.1, something like that. Because remember, hydrogen is an acid in the soil, so it's going to drive the pH down lower, and so then I would tell you to lime. So, you know, a lot of times when you lime off the pH, it is because you have low calcium in your base saturation, but that's not always the case. That's why I like to look at this, pH, uh, this base saturation first, and then if your pH is low, then make your liming recommendations off of that right there. So it's just something to think about when you're doing your liming and thing is to, to do that. So back to our efficiencies of our soil test then. So if magnesium runs up anytime magnesium goes over 12%, so let's say it's 18 to 20% on your base saturation. When that happens, it's the only one of these positive cations that makes nitrogen, phosphate, potash, and calcium go deficient in the soil. So it can tie up the main four things that your plant wants to do, to use, if, these, if your magnesium is high. So what do you do if your magnesium is high? So what's, what's the solution to doing these kinds of things, you know, to fix problems in the soil? Um, one thing that we look at using is sulfur. Sulfur is going to be a real key thing for you to use if you've got high magnesium or high iron, high aluminum, any metals, then sulfur is going to help you get that out of your soil and get it to where you'll be able to be more efficient out of your fertilizers that you're putting out there. So there's different kinds of sulfur that we can use. There's elemental sulfur, there's gypsum, uh, there's ammonium thiosulfate. So what we recommend depending is depending upon where you're at on your calcium levels in the soil. So if you're if you're perfectly good on your calcium level in the soil, you're already in this 60 to 6, 65 to 70 range, but you've got magnesium of around 18%. What you know, we don't want to use gypsum in that case because you'd be putting more lime out. And we've got plenty of lime, but we need sulfur. So then we'd either look at using elemental sulfur or using ammonium thiosulfate to try to start helping get this uh, magnesium level down for you. What it does is it'll just help purge these heavy metals out of your soil and everything. So sulfur is your key to do that, but we like to do all this in the fall of the year. If you're going to do soil amendments, we prefer that to happen in the fall of the year so that if we have problems in this soil test then, we can get these things corrected in the fall of the year. If you've got high magnesium, get that knocked out and purged out of your soil so that your corn plant or whatever else is not sucking that up. So, you know, during the growing season, if you wait till the spring to start knocking this stuff loose, then you could end up having magnesium, you know, problems in your, uh, in your plant or any other heavy metals, iron, aluminum, or whatever else that we might be getting rid of. And it can definitely affect your yield. We've seen it many times where guys have waited till the spring to do soil amendments with sulfur and it has hurt yield. So we're gonna recommend that you always do your fall, uh, do your uh, soil amendments like using sulfur for sure in the fall of the year. Now that doesn't mean you can't use sulfur in your nitrogen and that we can't use sulfur during, you know, in the growing season. But I'm talking about when we're putting out mounts that's going to actually change your soil test to where you're going to get better efficiencies out of it and everything. So um, that's just something to think about. But if you're down here and you're at, you know, 58% on your calcium and you're in here again at 18 to 20 on your your mag for some reason then this would be a good case when you could use gypsum you know because we need a little bit of calcium and we need the sulfur and so you would get two birds with one stone there but now most of those guys are going to tell you you can use one ton per acre i'm going to tell you that's too much so i'm going to say what we recommend is a thousand pounds per acre if you've got cecs of 12 plus okay if you're and i'm going to tell you from 600 to 800 per acre pounds if you're you know 12 or below 
12 or below because the amount of sulfur that you're putting out there is going to have effect on your trace minerals too. So if you put a lot of sulfur out there, you could lose boron, zinc, manganese, all the things that we do want to keep. So you can overdo a good thing. So these one ton recommendations, let's just get them out of there as far as I'm concerned. It's not something that I want to use that much at one time. It's taken us years to get to these kinds of levels. It's going to take a few years to get them back down. So just by putting out a whole lot more is, you know, trying to speed that process up is not going to be a good thing for you. So um, just remember that. So if you're asking me, you know, where does this magnesium come from? In our part of the country, we got it from dolomatic lime. So dolomatic lime has got as much magnesium in it as it does calcium. Therefore, we've built some of our magnesium levels as high as 30%. Well, I can tell you, when you've got magnesium at 30%, your ground becomes very hard, and it's hard to grow anything on it because you just do not give up nutrients very easily in that cropping situation. So we've had to use a lot of sulfur to try to get that corrected over, the, over time. So this is just kind of a real quick, down and dirty thing about soil balancing. There's a lot more to it than, than just what we've talked about about what happens in the soil when you use a lot of salt fertilizers and, and what that does as far as compaction and things like that. There's a lot more to it, but I wanted to get the main thing that I want you to get out of this video is these main base saturations right here. This part right here is what the main thing, if we can do this right here in your soil, then you're gonna get better efficiency out of everything you've done. So I appreciate your time. If you got any questions, you know, give us a call here at Teva Corporation, talk to your Tiva sales rep, they know all this base saturation and, and how to work through it. Any of those guys could answer your questions, so thank you.